is James Corbett, I'm the founder of Synvirtua. And we build augmented and virtual reality experiences um, and software. So can I just, if you don't mind me doing a quick hands up please for anyone, can I just find out how many people have tried or seen augmented or virtual reality? So at least, at least two anyway. Okay, great. So really I want you to take home one message from this presentation if any, and that's that you know, you might have been hearing about virtual reality and augmented reality for up to 20 years. It's one of those technologies that has been perennially just around the corner and never seemed to get here. But if you take home one message from today's talk, just please understand that it is actually finally here. The reason it's here is, if you like, it's been a peace dividend of the smartphone wars. So it's the competition in the smartphone market has driven down the cost and driven up the quality of a whole lot of electronics components that now means we can do augmented and virtual reality off of our mobile phones, off of our smartphones. So I'll just quickly get the horrible definition out of the way. What is virtual reality? We'll just concentrate on that one word there, presence. If you feel a very strong, convincing sense of being present in another place, that probably is virtual reality. And if you feel a convincing sense of digital objects being present in your real world space, that probably is augmented reality. So this thing has been kind of going under the radar until two years ago when Facebook spent two billion dollars on a startup company called Oculus. And those guys have had a very successful Kickstarter campaign where they raised one of the biggest amounts of money ever on Kickstarter, the crowdfunding campaign. But it still wasn't until Facebook bought them for $2 billion that everybody started going, what's going on here? What's this virtual reality stuff all about now? So Zuckerberg said a few very interesting things at the time. He said, if you like, the PC, the personal computer, was the big, mobile, the big computing platform of the 1980s. You had the internet and the World Wide Web was the big platform of the 1990s. You had the smartphones, the big platform of the 90s. And now augmented and virtual reality, Zuckerberg and many other people believe are going to be the big new platforms. And importantly, it's not just about the visuals or the gaming, the graphics. It's a brand new type of communication platform. And importantly, for people in sales and marketing to understand that it's, it really is a new very empowering communication platform. And the last bit there, he just kind of rephrased the definition of virtual reality. Again, it's about that work presence, about feeling like you're in another place. So it wasn't very clear what the hell still Facebook was interested in virtual reality for until about a few weeks ago when they had a developer conference and they gave a kind of a sneak peek of how they see virtual reality fitting with social networking. So I'll run this video for you. It goes fairly quickly, so I'll just stop it here and there. So what you're seeing here is, let's say I'm wearing my headset and I'm looking through the headset and I'm recording what you're seeing. And I see one of my friends here. He's wearing a headset as well, he's wearing two hand controllers. So the computer know, knows where his head and where his hands are, and they're being projected into the virtual reality, the shared experience with me, a social experience. Now he wants to share his photographs with me, but we're in a, a three-dimensional virtual reality, so they're not two-dimensional photographs, but three-dimensional. We've seen these 360 photospheres already on the web, but we're just looking at them mainly in 2D. Now we can start looking at them in, th in true 3D. So how does he share that photograph with me? He just literally catches it, it's like a marble or a crystal ball, and he pushes it into my face. And now I'm surrounded, I'm enveloped by the envelope of this virtual reality. So that's what he does with this bubble. And you'll see it's a photo of St. Pancreas Station in London. And now we can point up at the clock here, and because we're in the shared experience, I can see exactly what he's looking at, and we can talk about it as if we're actually there in person together. So think about that, how different that shared social experience is compared to what we've traditionally done in the web. We can't really share media and talk about media if we're separated by distance. 
now he shares another one, one with me, he just pushes another bubble in my face, and this one is the bridge there in front of the House of Commons. And so we're having a bit of fun just drawing things on each other, but look at the, the, the gestural interface that we have here. A lot of people say they prefer this to video conferencing even, because video conferencing you never really feel like you're sharing space with somebody else, regardless of how good the graphics are. But in virtual reality, you can see here, it feels like we're actually in the same place together. So we're dressing up there to take a virtual selfie. We've got a virtual selfie stick. You can see my avatar here now. That's him. And we're actually taking a photograph of our avatars on the bridge at the House of Commons. So we can throw away the photographs that we don't like. If we want to share the photograph that we do like with our friends, we put it into the virtual post box and it goes up to our Facebook stream. And we can do a virtual high five and it gets put up on our traditional boring old smartphone 2D Facebook stream. So I think that gives a glimpse of where Zuckerberg Police is thinking in terms of virtual reality going in the future. Of course, Facebook isn't going to have this market to themselves. All the big players are getting involved now. They all know this is going to be a huge market. So Sony is bringing out the uh, Morpheus headset for PlayStation. You've got the HTC Vive, another high-end headset. Samsung already brought out the Gear VR, which is a kind of mid-range headset with some electronics. And you put in a smartphone, and you have a nice mid-range headset. And then at the low end is a thing called Google Cardboard. There's about 5 million of these out in the wild now. Google Cardboard has been the most popular because it's the most accessible way of exploring virtual reality. Just literally a piece of cardboard that you, you get in a flat pack. I've got one over the back there and you're welcome to try it out afterwards if you'd like to see and get a taste of what virtual reality is like. You put in a smartphone. Now if your smartphone is very old, it might work well. My smartphone is old. It's two years old and it still works great. So this has been very popular. The New York Times did a big giveaway before Christmas. I think 50,000 Google Cardboards they gave out so that people could see their 360 degree videos, documentaries and so on. And now McDonald's is going to be putting them into the, the Happy Meal box. Literally when you're finished eating your chips, you'll wrap up the Happy Meal box and you'll have a, a cheap and cheerful virtual reality headset. And that's kind of where we were with Cardboard until just last week. And then Google came out with this announcement at their developer conference just last week. And it really is very big news for virtual reality. It's kind of Google putting their flag in the ground now and saying, we're going to create, just like we created the Android of smartphones, it's like iPhone or Android, and you know that Windows isn't really there at this stage in Microsoft. Google is saying that Daydream is going to be our Android of virtual reality. In fact, this Daydream platform is going to be baked into the next version of Android. So they're putting down a very strong signal to say that virtual reality is going to be very important. In fact, Samsung, LG, all the big players have committed to bringing out Daydream compatible smartphones by the end of this year. So you'll have a nice mid-range experience of virtual reality on a smartphone. So that's the main, the main element of virtual reality is obviously the visual element and the audio element. There are other things that can kind of carry you the rest, the rest of the way towards totally believing that you're in a digital experience, that you're in, you're in another place. Things like omnidirectional treadmills, which we have on order ourselves. So you can walk into one spot and feel like you're navigating through the virtual world. You can get more controllers than just hand controllers. You can get sensors that you can put in your torso and your legs to bring your avatar fully into the virtual reality. It's not just hands and the hands face that you saw earlier on, but a full body avatar. You say, why is that important? Uh, we've all seen versions of this old adage, but it's very, very true. Tell me I will forget, show me I may remember, involve me and I will understand. So if you have a fully embodied experience like you do in virtual reality, people come away with a much stronger impression, much stronger memory of that. And that's why this, this is being really adopted now in, in health and safety training and in a lot of industrial training because people get a much better understanding of something if they feel like their body and their mind are fully in there. So I'm going to give you a few examples of the ways this is being used and might be used. This is one we did ourselves. This is 
one that we did for a central manager. He was interested in exploring the idea of virtual reality shopping. So this girl comes home from work after a bad day. She wants to do the shopping from home. She puts on her, puts her phone into her Gear VR headset. And now what she sees is her local Centra shop. Not just the generic web page for Centra, but it's the actual shop in, in a Shannon in County Cork. So she recognizes it. She feels familiar. She knows where she is. She knows where the door is. She knows how to navigate through this environment. And this Centra manager said to us things we didn't know about shopping at the local level was about how important the social element is for them. So Mary might go into her virtual reality shop at seven o'clock in the evening. And she might meet her friend Betty down there as well and have a chat with her. And she knows exactly the layout of the shelves because it's modeled exactly after the real shop. She knows where things are. We shop by memory. Even if we write down the lists, we, we go around the shop in a particular pattern. And it's a gesture-based system. So you don't need to learn it. You just put out your hands and you touch things including menus. If you want to select a particular credit card, you can do it from a finger menu, and then you just literally pick up the Java cakes and put them into your basket. So people have said, well, why would you do it as opposed to, you know, clicking on a few drop-down links in Amazon? But if you remember the first time you saw the Amazon website, you had an awful lot of learning to do to figure out where things were and how to get around that, whereas it's so much more intuitive if you do it like this. And in fact, just a few weeks ago, eBay launched the first, what they were calling the first virtual re reality department store. So they're taking it very seriously as well. Who else is using this stuff in Ireland at the moment? Uh, it was great to see two months ago that Sherry Fitzgerald are using this to show people properties that haven't been built yet. We're doing that kind of thing ourselves actually, we're working with architects and what they say is being able to give people an experience of a house that isn't built yet as opposed to the way they do it traditionally which is in a cardboard model, it just completely transforms people's ability to, to see what their house is going to be like because they can look up to see the height of the ceiling, they can really feel the width of the doorway as they're walking through it. It's a fully spatialized environment that you just can't get by looking in a monitor no matter how big the monitor is. Fault Ireland said they're doing virtual reality tours of the wide Atlantic way and the reason I say they say they're doing it is because what they're really doing is 360 video. So there's a bit of confusion about 360 video versus virtual reality. Um, not quite the same thing because in virtual reality you should be able to move through whereas you can't with 360 video. But within a few years you will be able to do so with a new technology called Lightfield. Don't worry about what this does, but it's a new type of camera that means that after the video is shot you'll actually be able to move your head and the point of view will change to correspond to that. So it's going to be almost like a, if you remember the movie The Matrix, it's almost going to be like that kind of, a, of an experience, that kind of convincing virtual reality. Um, animation companies, Pixar, are looking at the way that they can change the point of view. When you're inside the animated experience with the character completely changes the narrative and the storytelling. They often call this an empathy machine because these characters can now look you in the eye because you're there with them. And it completely changes the way you feel and relate to characters in an experience. So just briefly before I finish, I want to touch on augmented reality, which you'll have heard of as well. There's a bit of confusion there about what's the difference between those two. But basically, virtual reality is when you put on a headset and everything you see is coming from the computer. Everything you see is digital. Whereas with augmented reality, you can kind of look through the lenses 
you're seeing your real world, but you're seeing digital things projected into the real world. We used to call that kind of thing holograms. So Microsoft have a new headset now called the HoloLens, which is basically playing the world on the world hologram. And it's going to do exactly this kind of thing. So I'd like to show you a video of how Volvo are experimenting with the HoloLens. So this um, augmented reality technology is kind of lagging behind virtual reality by about a year or two because it is a more difficult technology to perfect. But that headset is real. You can get it as a developer kit at the moment. It costs $3,000, so it's going to be a while before it gets into the consumer marketplace, but it's going to get a lot of uptake in the enterprise market that's in the next year or two. So really, um, that's just a very quick run through, folks, to see, I suppose, where augmented and virtual reality are at today and hopefully to give you a flavour of what's possible with this technology. So, if any of you would like to see, get a glimpse of it later on after the talk, I have a Google Cardboard with me, and you're welcome to give it a try. So, thank you very much for listening.